Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and this week we're learning all about 3D printing. Let's roll the intro and get to work. This is the Longa LK5 Pro 3D printer and my goal is to see if I can get up and running in just one day. I know absolutely nothing about 3D printing and I have done very little research before this video on purpose so that I can step through the learning with all of you. Longa reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to test out their latest 3D printer and I thought it would be a fantastic opportunity to learn a new tool but also as we move through this digital age there are so many cool creators out there creating tools and accessories for the workshop that can be printed on a 3D printer so I wanted to add one to the workshop. I will link this particular printer down in the description below but our first step is to get it together and see what we're working with. While I assemble the 3D printer, let me tell you a couple of features of the LK5 Pro. The printer comes 90% assembled, which is handy for a newbie like me and also means you're up and running quickly. The printing size is up to 300mm by 300mm by 400mm and the printer is extremely quiet and it's open source so down the road I have options to install some add-ons onto the printer like an auto leveling tool. The touchscreen is colour and extremely easy to navigate. The printer includes a ceramic coating glass bed which makes it easy to remove the finished print. The LK5 Pro is equipped with a high temp resistant Teflon tube to stand up to 280 degrees. The 3D printer is all together and it's pretty easy to put together but you do need what feels like a thousand different Allen key sizes but they supply everything that you need and the instructions are in colour so it's pretty easy to follow along. It's well packed in the box and it has very sturdy construction but keep in mind I've never used a 3D printer before so I don't have anything to compare it to but I have used some lasers in the past with similar construction and I would say this is well built. Now as per my instructions, the next step is to turn the machine on and level the bed. Now tell me I'm not alone in this, that it is very nerve wracking to turn any machine on for the first time. But I need to push through that anxiety, have a crack at leveling the bed, and then hopefully we're at the point where we can load some software onto the computer and have a go at printing something. Okay, it's plugged in, are we ready? Three, two, one. I can hear fans. Oh, the screen's lighting up. Okay. Instructions leveling. I think the bed is level. Hopefully we'll test it shortly and see if I am right. But in the meantime, we need to start to think and talk about software. And this is where I've done a little bit of research before this video. Now, depending on how you're going to use your 3D printer will depend on what software you need. But at the very least, you are going to need slicing software, which essentially is a program that gives the instructions to the 3D printer. Online, people recommend Cura, which is also what they recommend in the instructions. And I don't know if this is an all 3D printing company thing, but the longer company have included the Cura software in the box, which as a beginner is really, really helpful. Now moving on from that, if you're just going to purchase plans or models, whatever they call them, online, then you're only going to need the slicing software. But if you want to start to design your own projects, you're going to need what they call a CAD modeling program. And there's a whole bunch out there. Some are free, some are paid. I will talk about them a little bit later on because I have a little bit of experience as I use 3D modeling in my woodworking projects. But our first step is to get the Cura software loaded onto the laptop and then hopefully we can have a crack at printing something.
printer is warming up, so I am so close to pressing go and hopefully having a first successful print. I've installed the filament, which is PLA Plus, and it's in gold because that's my brand colors, and the first thing I'm going to print is my logo. While the printer is heating up, something I did want to let you know that included on this USB is a ton of helpful information for beginners like myself. There's a video showing how to install the filament, and there's also a video of the build process so that if you do get stuck at any point, you can refer to that video and it will walk you through step by step. Now the other cool thing about this machine is that it operates as a standalone machine. So I don't need to have my laptop plugged into it for it to work. I can simply transfer the file onto the included micro USB, plug it into the machine and press go. So with that being said, hopefully in about an hour and a half time, I'll have a print to show you. So that took an hour and 44 minutes and it looks fantastic. It is time to take it off the board and get a closer look. Does it just pop off? They give you this scraper. Ah, there we go. Okay. Woo now this is the support bit around it. That should snap off. It doesn't snap off. Now I think that's because technically speaking, I actually don't need that support on the bed because I had put a backer piece to the logo. So I actually don't think I need that backer piece. I'm gonna have to do some research because these support pieces should actually just snap off, which they're not doing. I can snap the ends, but I cannot snap. Ooh, whoops, hang on. Oh no, so you can snap it, but it's now, thicker than I actually wanted it to be. I'm gonna to have to do some research about how I can refine it. But as a first print with absolutely no experience, this morning I had a 3D printer in a box and this afternoon I am printing my logo in 3D form. I am going to attempt to print one more thing which I have gotten from a website. It's a file that I have just downloaded. It's a free file. I'll include it in the description below and we'll have a crack at that and see what that is like to print. But for a first print, super happy with how this has turned out. But let's reload it. I think I might do a different color just to see what that's like. Let's print something else and then we can see how that goes. Okay, I lied. I ended up doing a few more prints to really test the printer out. I was nervous at the beginning that the settings on a 3D printer were going to be difficult to figure out, but it turns out they're really easy. On the back of the filament box, it tells you the nozzle temp and the bed temp, and then on the printer itself, it's very easy to set. I've spent the last couple of days doing further testing with the 3D printer because I wanted to be sure of my final thoughts before I closed out this video. And I also wanted to test a couple of things and make sure that if you were a beginner, you could walk away from this video with the confidence that you could get up and running in just one day because it is 100% possible to do. Now, a couple of things that I have printed is this Lego stud, really just because Lego is cool. But through this print, which took an hour and 45 minutes, I was able to learn about support structures and how easy they are to remove. I used the default support structure settings in Cura and it worked really well on this print and they were pretty easy to remove. I also wanted to test the printer over an extended print time and I wanted to test its accuracy. So for that, I am using these Mark Dana check squares. He is over at Dana Made on YouTube. If you're not following him, you certainly should. I will link him below. He sells the files to these really versatile check squares and one print took 15 hours and another print took 13 hours. And this is really where I did the learning. As a beginner, in my opinion, the number one thing you can learn about is support structures and build adhesion, when you need to use them and how you need to use them. Before we get to supports and build adhesion, I wanted to quickly show you the accuracy of these squares. When I align them to a perfect 90, there is no gap. So in terms of accuracy, the printer gets a big tick. Now the first square that I printed was this green and yellow one and I had it sitting upright on the bed because I thought that was the best way to go about it. 
and after 15 hours I came out, took it off the bed and quickly realized that removing the supports was going to be a living nightmare and basically impossible. I got this far in 20 minutes but trying to remove the supports around the lettering was really, really difficult and where I could remove the supports I was not happy with the finish. So I went back to the drawing board because I wanted to have another go to see if I could get it better and I rotated the square so that it was now sitting flat on the bed and the main support structure was underneath because of this bar that runs under the square and it was much, much better. First off, it only took 13 hours to print instead of 15 hours and it took me about 30 seconds to snap off this bottom support and the lettering is much, much cleaner because it doesn't require any supports. So when you go to print your projects, really take a second just to think about how you're putting it onto the bed and how you're going to remove those support structures at the end of the print. When it comes to build adhesion, you don't always need to turn it on. It really comes down to the design and how much surface area is on the build plate. When I was printing my logo, it was my first print, so I automatically had build adhesion on. Turns out I didn't actually need to have it. The bottom of the design would have been enough to actually hold it onto the bed, so I could have got away with turning it off. When it comes to something like the Lego stud, because the bottom is not really a huge surface area, you do want to have the build adhesion on because that makes sure that the build stays on the build plate throughout the printing process. When it came to these squares, again, it's quite a lot of surface area, so I didn't need to turn them on. So it's just something to think through and to work out whether or not you do or don't will come down to how much surface area is actually touching the build plate. Before I say goodbye to you, I want to quickly run over the CAD modeling options if that is the path you want to go down where you can design and print your own models. There is everything from free software all the way up to really expensive. But if you're a DIY hobbyist in a garage like me, honestly, the free ones will be just fine. The first program I'm going to recommend is called Tinkercad. It's the more basic of the two. And if you have absolutely no modeling experience, this is where I think you should start. I personally use Fusion 360 as I have come from SketchUp, but it can be really overwhelming when you first open the program. I took the I Like To Make Stuff Fusion 360 course, which was really great at breaking down the barrier of entry and getting me up and running really quickly. It's a super powerful tool and it is free for personal use. So they are my two recommendations in CAD modeling software if that is the path you wanna go down. I have had a ton of fun learning about 3D printing over the last couple of days and I am so glad that I have added a 3D printer to the Small Fry Workshop. As always, I will leave links in the description below to everything that I have used throughout this video and I want to say a massive thank you to Longa for sending me over the LK5 Pro to test out and start my learning journey about 3D printing. I hope you have liked this video and I hope you walk away with the confidence that you can get up and running in just one day. And if you have, help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons and I'll see you on the next one.